I'm joined today by Dr. Patricia Coghlan. She's joining me today to discuss a session she and I recorded several months ago, and she'll be pausing the session periodically to explain what's going on in the context of ISTDP theory. Patricia, I'm excited to have you with me today. Let's get into the session and break down what's happening in it. I look forward to it. So tell me, you know, what brings you and how I can help. So what I'd like to work on is um, this, it's, it's a subtle anxiety, but I would definitely call it an, a form of anxiety that arises for me in certain moments in certain situations. Uh -huh. And pretty much it's when I need to ask somebody to do something for me, M even more so if it's on the phone, if I have to get on the phone and call and ask somebody to do something for me. Uh -huh. And I just feel this burst of anxiety and resistance and a desire to sort of, I'll, I'll call later, I'll call tomorrow, sure. you know, and, sure. you know, and I, of course, get over it and I make the phone calls and I make the asks. So it doesn't stop me from doing things, but it, but it does make me sometimes wait a few days or, or just feel really uncomfortable in the lead up sure. of doing it. And, and it sounds it can like, also, I'm sorry to interrupt, but it can also make me get a little tongue tied sometimes when I'm on the phone, which is very unusual for me to be tongue tied. Right, right. So another manifestation of that anxiety. And are you also saying that you're curious about the origin? Like, what is this about also? I, I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, what, why is this here? What's it because about? I'm like, curious because it's something that I've been observing in myself for so long. Yeah, how long would I, you say? as long as I can remember. I mean, it goes, it's hard to say. I, I, I wouldn't say there was a point, a moment in my life where it started happening. It's just, I think I've always had this feeling of, it's, it's not just anxiety, it's a feeling like they're gonna be um, either mad or upset or, or cut me off, reject me. Um, right. It's really a feeling like something, it's not, it, yeah, like something bad. I'll be worse off at the end of the, the relationship will be worse off after I make this call. Sure, sure. And, and so we'll dig into that because it seems like you've been pretty specific. It has to do with, you know, how dare you ask for something, right? right? You get anxious, you anticipate a negative response. Uh, and then go into avoidance, whatever. But yeah. it, at first you said, I have this burst of anxiety. So tell me what that feels like in your body. It's a visceral sense of anxiety. Even just talking about it, I can feel it around my solar plexus, wow. and below, down here in the top of my belly. Right. And it goes What's up, it? it starts to go up a little bit into my throat. It makes it a little- What's the it? So what's the actual sensation? What's going okay, on? Okay, yeah. Um, it's a gag, a little bit of a gagging feeling in my throat. It's a tension, yeah. a tightness. Yep. Um, Right. And it, and, but it's more than just tightness. It also feels a little, I don't know if electric is the right word, but yeah. it has a lot of energy to it. Um, exactly. So there's some kind of feeling there, right? That's generating anxiety, right? So something's wanting to come up, you're constricting around it, and then you end up getting choked, tongue tied, et cetera, right? Okay. So let's stop here. Uh, as I'm watching this, I'm thinking about a quote from Sullivan, which said, skill in psychotherapy consists of doing a lot with a little. And I can already identify about five things that I'm doing, right, that are actually really important um, in ISTDP, right? So we start with the presenting complaint, right? We always start with the current suffering, not with something from the past. So what is the problem? And as you, you talk about the problem, I try to get some sense of, you know, where, when, with whom, and you're saying it's, it's been going on almost forever. You can't really identify an original precipitant, right? But you're aware that you become anxious right, about asking. So the first thing I do, and then you seem to be like, you're, befuddled by it, right? You don't understand it. So I ask you, are you curious, right, about getting to the bottom of this? What's this all about? What's causing it, right? So in this way, I am 
forming an alliance, right? What's the problem? Let's get an agreement about that. And then also getting some agreement about the task, which is something that research shows, you know, therapists and patients don't often agree on. So I'm trying to get this agreement, right? Are we here to get to the bottom of this thing, right? Not just to stay on the level of the symptom, but what, what the cause of it is, right? And then um, you begin to talk more about this, what I'm pointing out is a conflict, right? So a part of you wants to ask, there are feelings coming up, right? That you're getting anxious about and then constricting. So right here, I'm using what we would call the triangle of conflict, right? The understanding that there are feelings generating anxiety, right? Which then prompt the use of defenses. And it's really the defenses, the ways we avoid these uncomfortable feelings that end up causing and perpetuating the problem. So I wanna be able to see, we're starting to identify that there's an emotional conflict associated with this, right? And this is what we're here to get to the bottom of, right? So already in just a couple minutes, right? Actually a lot is happening, okay? So let's see how you respond to this feedback about this uh, conflict. And also the, the one other thing about, I'm asking about how do you experience this anxiety in the body is very, very important in ISTDP. Um, Davenlu urged us to take a phenomenological approach, not to assume that I know what you mean by anxiety, right? And he has been able to identify three different, what he calls channels of anxiety that have a lot of diagnostic significance. So we always want to look into this pretty early, right? You're experiencing anxiety as tension, right? In the body and constriction. So it's going into the striated voluntary muscle, which is actually a good thing. It means you have the capacity, right? The ego adaptive capacity to tolerate that discomfort consciously, right? Whereas other patients might say, oh, you know, I, I, I feel fine, I don't know, but oh, you know, I get these stomach aches. I mean, um, so it'll go into a somatic channel, right? Or they might actually get confused cognitively and say, well, what, what, what did you just say? I, I, uh, oh, I don't know why my vision is, is getting blurry, right? So this is giving me, um, as I press to this conflict, I want to see where's the anxiety going. It's going to tell me what your capacity is so that I get a sense early on, are we going to be able to go directly, right, to those feelings? Or am I going to have to do some work to sort of build up your ego to be able to tolerate this anxiety? So that's also a really important piece. And then you end up getting choked, tongue-tied, et cetera, right? So the good news is in a way, right? This is happening right now, right? You called me, you're asking me for help, right? And you can feel, right? So it's happening right now, yeah? Well, I